hey guys, you are picking your A-levels at the moment, and as well as everything you've got going on with revision, this is a really, really big choice. And a question I get asked a lot if you're considering A-level physics is, do you need to do A-level math as well? I have an expert on the subject for you. This is Lewis from A-level physics Hello. online, and he's going to answer that question for you. So, do you need to do A-level maths if you're doing A-level physics? You don't have to. So sometimes this really depends on the school and some schools say that if you're doing A-level physics you need to be doing A-level maths as well and I would recommend it because a lot of the time when you're doing A-level maths you're used to using uh, all the knowledge that you had at GCSE and you're constantly applying it, you're constantly, constantly practicing it and there's also quite a bit of crossover as well. So when you're doing the mechanics modules in A-level mathematics you're looking at CVAT equations which are the equations of motion and you learn it in mathematics and you learn exactly the same thing in physics and then it's easy because you're just doing the same thing in two different subjects. Um, and I found that most of the students who do physics, they, they tend to like maths anyway. You know, they, they like, you know, they, they just like sitting there doing question after question, which I guess is what you do in maths. But in physics, we do the same thing with real stuff. So we're not just learning about a spring hypothetically and what might happen for something moving in a circle. In physics, we actually get toys out to play with and actually look at these real world application of maths. Now, when I've been teaching physics before, I found that probably about 90 to 95% of the class did A-level maths as well. And a lot of them did further maths and the physics kind of fitted in quite nicely. The issue now is that you can only really, most people only do three subjects at A-level. It used to be you could do four, maybe do one of them to AS level and then drop it at the end of year 12. But now with the exams at the end of year 13, often you're limited to three subjects. And if you maybe maybe considering med medicine for example, you think well I want to do chemistry and biology because they're useful and maths is useful and then physics is like the fourth subject that's not is it really important. So sometimes people they find they can't do physics because they've got three other subjects they'd rather do more which is fine. Sometimes maybe somebody's third option could be physics but you don't need to do A-level maths to access A-level physics. Most of the time it relies on the following things. You need to know Pythagoras, which is a GCSE thing. You need to know a bit of trigonometry, which is sine, cos and tan. Also and you, GCSE. That's GCSE. The averages, you need to know the, the, uh, the mean. You don't even need to know modes or medians. You just need to know how to work at an average, how to plot graphs. This is GCSE skills. The only skill that you, is different to what you've learned at GCSE is using logarithms. So this is something that you do in year 13, and actually it's pretty straightforward. If, you, if you're if you doing A-levels anyway, you're going to be learning loads of new content, so just a little bit more is not a big deal. The difference is, I suppose, if you're doing A-level maths, you're doing lots of practice all the time. But I'd say that compared to that A-level physics, there's not as much you know actual proper mathematics in it. If, however, you want to do maybe physics university or engineering, then actually maths is pretty essential. So if you're wanting to go down the physics or an engineering route in the future, Alongside A-level physics, you should be doing A-level maths. If you want to do physics, it's maybe your third choice, maybe it's supporting medicine, or maybe it's just something you really enjoy, because it's quite a nice subject, then you don't. You can still succeed, you can still get an A or an A-star by not doing maths. And I know this, because last year, one of my tutees, he was doing biology, physics and chemistry, uh, got A-stars and all of them, you know, so it can happen. What if you really hate maths? Then... Well, first that's a bit weird because maths is amazing. I quite I like. Do, I do quite like maths. I'm sorry, I know loads of you hate it, but I do love maths. I liked it. It was easier than English. English was lots of writing. Oh, I hated English. Okay, I, again, I'm pretty biased at this. Um, if you don't like doing mathematics, then physics wouldn't be a good choice because there's still a lot of maths involved. And although there's a bit more writing, you've got to be able to kind of describe methods for exam, for, you know, for experiments you might have done. And there's often long answer questions where you're maybe answering, you know, kind of maybe sort of six mark questions, they're not lots of writing, but you still have to rely on your mathematical ability. And therefore, if you don't like doing maths, then physics, you're just going to not enjoy. So maybe something else is, is more appropriate. Like chemistry. Yeah, but even there's maths and chemistry, though. Yeah, well, we teach it, Yeah, like, from basics. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I think if you don't like maths, then it's a shame, but it's, it's just a language that you need to learn how to use. And if you, don't really, if you really don't enjoy it, I mean, you've only got three choices at A-level, so there's no point choosing something you're not going to enjoy. So, yeah. And that is the most important thing really, you need to enjoy your A-level subjects. You're going to be spending a lot of time doing them and if you pick a subject you don't enjoy because you think you should do it, then you're not going to put the time, you're not going to put the effort in, you're not going to get the grades in the end. Thank you, that's no really good advice. Thank you.